The Defense Media Activity Sergeant Audrey Santana's rendition of the National Anthem kicked off Fort Meade's Veterans Day observance on Thursday. Hello and welcome to Meade Week. I'm Brian Spann. We'll have more from this week's ceremony in a moment. We also have news from the Tax Assistance Center, Thanksgiving's right around the corner, and the latest from the Asymmetric Warfare Group. But first, Fort Meade observed the Veterans Day holiday with a ceremony at the Post Museum. Congressman Dutch Ruppersberger of Maryland's 2nd District, which includes Fort Meade, said that despite a weak economy, we simply cannot forget those who serve. Now, during these difficult times, the government must do less than more. Yes, we need to reduce spending, and yes, we need to lower our deficit. It makes us weaker if we don't. But one thing we simply can't do is leave the men and women of our military behind, and we won't. Special guest speaker Rick Hagman, you might know him better as General Meade, a member of the Fort Meade community since 1958 and a Vietnam War vet, echoed the congressman's remarks. I think with all this political stuff, the sequestration, closure. I don't want to bring up this bad news, but nonetheless, and I think the lack of percentage of veterans, I don't want to just go on a tangent, but the lack of the percentage of veterans in our leadership has lost a little bit of that we are about something bigger, something greater than us. The United States Army Band Brass Quintet and the Defense Information School Joint Color Guard performed the closing retreat ceremony. In other news, as you probably know, Fort Meade is home to more than 100 tenant units. One of these, the Asymmetric Warfare Group, is an elite unit that provides observation, analysis, training, and advisory support to combatant commanders worldwide. The AWG's Lieutenant Colonel, Sunis Limbaka, has this story in a recent complex training scenario. What does the rappel tower, climbing wall, container yard, and other everyday apparatuses have in common? They are simple home station solutions used by the Asymmetric Warfare Group to get at complex problem sets. Today we came out and conducted a, a climbing event. Uh, we've been doing these over the last few weeks. We're using climbing walls, we're using connexes, and creating obstacles for, for our operational advisors to train on. The overall concept was to, uh, to imitate negotiating vertical obstacles in a subterranean environment. All of the exercises here are designed to replicate and reinforce TTPs and SOPs that we developed. Well, most of the techniques that we use in subterranean are derived from other types of operations, such as urban or mountainous terrain. Uh, when you're working underground, you end up running into vertical shafts that you have to crawl up or lower people down into, and that applies uh, for climbing ropes or rappelling. Uh, such as off of the, the tower right here. And uh, we, we integrate those things so that uh, when we get into the subterranean environment, we're prepared for them. Captain Carlton said the other aspect his unit wanted to demonstrate is the ability to conduct no-cost or low-cost training with home station assets. Uh, and it's easy to, to tell somebody, oh, you can do this or you can do that. But what we're demonstrating is by just using uh, equipment that most units have, uh, the caliber of training that you can conduct at home station with very little overhead. And we were able to put today's event together in less than an hour and a half. Uh, just using these training tools uh, for urban and uh, climbing and adapting them to subterranean, that's our overall end state, is to make sure that our operational advisors are more adaptable. And we want to push that out uh, to the Army along with the, the low-cost training. Elsewhere, Fort Meade's Tax Assistance Center is looking for volunteers for the upcoming tax season. No experience is required. Training and certification are provided through the IRS. Training starts in January, and the tax center is open through the end of April. If you're interested in helping provide free tax assistance and electronic filing for service members, military families, and retirees, stop by the tax center at 4217 Roberts Avenue or call 301-677-9755. One final reminder, the Freedom Inn Dining Facility has published the hours for the November 28th Thanksgiving holiday meal. A continental breakfast is being served from 6 to 6.30. The first Thanksgiving meal seating is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the second informal seating starts at 3 p.m. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.